All right, if you look at the title for the PowerPoint of this section, I think I called it Summon Difference Formulas and More. And it's more. There's a whole lot of formulas that come into this section. Summon Difference Formulas, Double Angle Formulas, Power Reducing Formulas, Half Angle Formulas. Some of them are just formulas that we introduce and you know that they're there and you work a little bit with them. Others are formulas that are more important as you move on through the courses from pre-calc to calc and especially calc 2 where there's a lot of tricks. I'm going to try to point out the ones that are most important versus the ones that are kind of nice to know about and you can work with them but not as important as the others. So like I said there's a lot of these trig values some of them are finding exact values for sine cosine and tangent of non-unit circle points. I mean any point is on the unit circle but if you wanted like the tangent of pi over 12 you're going to have to do some manipulation because we generally don't memorize a sine and cosine value for pi over 12 that are exact values on the unit circle. So again, some of this stuff will become useful again when you take a course like Calc 2 and you end up doing a lot of trig functions on there. So my first introduction was, will this relationship work? Can I say that the cosine of pi over 2 is equal to the cosine of pi over 4 plus the cosine of pi over 4, right? Because pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. Well, cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Is that the same thing as the cosine of pi over 2? Well, this gives me 2 root 2 over 2, which is square root of 2. What's the cosine of pi over 2? Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Oh, that's not going to work. So the point is I can't take the cosine of pi over 2 and break it up into the cosine of pi over 4 plus the cosine of pi over 4. It doesn't work that way. So we're going to need some sort of a formula that allows us to take the sum of a cosine. And we happen to have one, right? What is the cosine of two angles added together? Cosine A, cosine B, minus sine A, sine B. So the sum of the cosines, right, cosine of A plus B, is cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. It works the reverse. Cosine of A minus B is going to be cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine. So you can imagine doing a conga line through the halls at work or at school, going cosine, cosine, sine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, all the way till you get through, and the problem's done. Hey, if it works for cosine, I'll bet you it works for sine. Except that instead of going cosine, cosine, sine, sine, how does the sine one go? It goes sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Now, when I say that, I'm glossing over a couple of things, right? Look, there's the A's and the B's. Notice that the A's and the B's go in that order. So sine of A plus B is sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. So that one goes sine, cosine, cosine, sine. The plus and the minus work the same way as the formula. So for the cosine, they're reversed. And the cosines are the ones that go cosine, cosine, sine, sine. For the sine of A plus B and the sine of A minus B, those are the ones that retain the signs. So those are the ones you're going to need to memorize. After this, I think all the rest of these are on the formula sheet, and I'll pop up that formula sheet to verify it. But these things are not on the formula sheet. So the, we call these the sum and difference of cosines, sum and difference of signs. You're going to have to remember these in order to take tests. So what am I going to use these for? The first one says find an exact value for the sine of 75 degrees. So the goal is to find two, I'm putting in quotes, nice numbers on the unit circle that add up to 75 degrees. So, I mean, you could pick 74 and 1, but that's not going to be much of a help because those values are not common values that we know on the unit circle. So what could we use that adds up to 75? I mean, I suppose we could do 60 and 15. That adds up to 75. But 15 is not a nice number on the unit circle. So let's go smaller. Let's do 45 and 30. If I add 45 plus 30, sure enough, I get 75. So instead of saying the sine of 75, I'm going to say the sine of 45 plus 30. Well, 45 plus 30 is still 75, but now let's use my formula. So the formula that we're going to use is the first one up here, the sine of A plus B equals sine A cosine B plus cosine sine. So it's going to give me sine of 45 cosine 30 plus cosine 45 sine 30. So sine, cosine, cosine, sine with a plus in the middle. And now we can replace those with the values. So the sine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. 
Right. Cosine of 45 is also root 2 over 2. The sine of 30 is 1 half. So over here, the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 6. 2 times 2 is 4. In the second part, the square root of 2 times 1 is the square root of 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Look at that. I got myself a common denominator. So this gives me the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4. There's nothing else that I can do to simplify this. Neither of the radicals have any common factors that are square roots that I can pull out. Like perfect squares like the square root of 4, square root of 9, things like that. And I can't combine two radicals like that, so it just sits as square root of 6 plus square root of 2 equals 4. So this is an exact value for the sine of 75 degrees. So the sine of 75 is not one of those standard unit circle signs, but... If I can figure out information about 45 and 30, throw it into my formula, I have an answer. And if you want to check, you can grab your calculator and ask it to calculate the sine of 75 degrees and then also find a value for the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4 and show that they're the same thing. All right, this is something that came up in the last unit. Now, sine and cosine are complementary functions. So the sine of an angle equals the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. Now we're going to be asked to show that. So how does the formula work for the difference of cosines? Well, it's cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So cosine, cosine, opposite. So it's a plus sine, sine. So pi over 2 minus theta, because it's cosine, becomes cosine pi over 2 cosine theta plus sine pi over 2 sine theta. All right, what's cosine pi over 2? That's up at the top of the unit circle where the x-coordinate is 0, the y-coordinate is 1. So we get 0 times the cosine of theta. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. And 0 times cosine theta is just 0. And we're left with the sine of theta. And now that equals what's on the other side. So you can do identities with this as well. All right, we're going to try a couple of examples where we're trying to find exact values for these sines and cosines that are not standard unit circle values. So the cosine of 11 pi over 12, that's in the second quadrant. 12 pi over 12 would be pi. So this is just a little bit short of that. What am I going to use? Well, let's think of it in terms of twelfths. I could do like a 6 pi over 12 and a 5 pi over 12, but the 6 pi over 12 would be nice. That makes pi over 2, but a 5 pi over 12 is not going to help. That's not one of the nice values on my unit circle. So 6 and 5 doesn't look like it's going to work so well. What if I tried a 4 pi over 12? 4 pi over 12 and 7 pi over 12, man, nah, that's not going to work so well either. How about a 3 pi over 12? Well, if I did a 3 pi over 12, then I'd have to add an 8 pi over 12. Ah, okay, that'll work, right? Because 3 pi over 12 plus 8 pi over 12 gives me back 11 pi over 12. But 3 pi over 12 is pi over 4. 8 pi over 12 is 2 pi over 3, right? If I pull a 4 out of top and bottom, pull a 3 out of top and bottom. Those are both values on my unit circle that I can work with. So instead of writing cosine of 11 pi over 12, I'll think of it as the cosine of pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 3. So before I came to that conclusion, I had to do a little scratch work on the side to figure out what are the combinations of values in terms of twelfths that will give me something I can work with. Generally, the odd twelfths are not going to work out well, right? Except for things like 3 pi over 12. But 5 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12, 11 pi over 12, they're not nice points on the unit circle. Neither is pi over 12. All right, so how does this work? If, if since it's cosine, it goes cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So cosine pi over 4, cosine 2 pi over 3. There's your cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. So sine pi over 4, sine 2 pi over 3. All right, the cosine of pi over 4, square root of 2 over 2. What's the cosine of 2 pi over 3? 
Well, we're in the second quadrant, so we know that it's got to be negative. And at 2 pi over 3, the x-coordinate is negative 1 half. All right, sine pi over 4, square root of 2 over 2. The sine of 2 pi over 3 then must be square root of 3 over 2. And now we simplify. So this gives me a negative square root of 2 over 4. This gives me a square root of 6 over 4. You're going to see a lot of square root of 6s and 4s and square root of 2s in the answer. So I can combine my answer and just leave it as negative root 2 minus root 6 all over 4. If you really want to, you can pull the negative on the outside and make it square root of 2 plus square root of 6 like this over 4. Right. So either one will work. Either of these two are the correct answer to the problem. All right, let's try the one next to it. Okay, so this is the same idea, except first of all, it's sine instead of cosine. And second of all, we're in degrees instead of radians. Okay, I need two nice unit circle points that add up to 195 degrees. So this is going to add up to be more than 180. All right, so I'm going to split this apart. How? Well, I don't know. I could try a 160 and a 35. That adds up to 195, but neither of them are nice points on the unit circle. What if I tried 150 and 45? Oh, well, that adds up to 195, and both 150 and 45 are nice values on the unit circle. So I'm going to think of the sine of 195 degrees as the sine of 150 plus 45 degrees. So how does sine go? Sine is the one that goes sine, cosine, cosine, sine, right? You dance around, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, cosine. So sine... 150 cosine 45 plus sine 45 cosine 150, right? So each gets a sine, each gets a cosine. Let's look at some values. Sine is still positive in the second quadrant, so the sine of 150 degrees is a half. Cosine of 45, root 2 over 2. Sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of 150, cosine is negative in the second quadrant, so negative square root of 3 over 2. So here I get square root of 2 over 4 plus negative square root of 6 over 4. Add them together and I get square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4. So that's an exact value for the sine of 195 degrees. You could verify this on a calculator. And of course, if somebody just said, you know, give an estimate for the sine of 195, you could throw that in a calculator, but that wouldn't give you an exact value. That would give you a decimal approximation. All right, these are fun. Let's keep this going. Cosine of 15. Well, there's probably nothing I'm going to add together that are unit circle points to give me 15, right? Our choices are things like 30, 45, 60, 90, etc. Oh, but 60 minus 45 will give me 15. So let's think of this as the cosine of 60 minus 45. So when you get some of those lower numbers, you may have to work backwards and subtract. Are those the only two possibilities that will work? No. If I can do 60 minus 45, then why can't I do 45 minus 30, right? I could think of it as the cosine of 45 minus 30 degrees, right? So there's more than one way to tackle these problems. So actually, since I have it written in the bottom, let's use the second one. Although, I'm reiterating that either one of these will give you the same answer. So cosine with a subtraction. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So cosine 45, cosine 30, plus, right, because opposite of what's inside. Cosine 45, cosine 30, plus sine 45, sine 30. Cosine 45, square root of 2 over 2. Cosine 30, square root of 3 over 2, both positive. And over here, I get a root 2 over 2 and a 1 half. So this gives me square root of 6 over 4 plus square root of 2 over 4. My answer is square root of 6 plus square root of 2 all over 4. Done. All right, how about the sine of 19 pi over 12? So here we are back with the 12s again. Well, I mean, I can make it, can I make it 10 pi over 12 and 9 pi over 12? Would that work? I mean, I know it'll add up to 19 pi, 
But 10 pi over 12 is 5 pi over 6. That's a nice number. 9 pi over 12 is 3 pi over 4. That's a nice number also. So it looks like that's what I'm going to go with, a 3 pi over 4 and a 5 pi over 6. So I'll write this as the sine of 5 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 4. Where is 19 pi over 12? Well, 18 pi over 12 is 3 pi over 2. So that's at the very bottom of the unit circle. So if 19 pi over 12 must be in quadrant 4 because it's beyond 18 pi over 12. Right, so quadrant 4 means that the sine values are negative. Those are the y values. And so whatever answer I get should be negative. All right, what's the formula for sine? It's the one that goes sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So sine 5 pi over 6, cosine 3 pi over 4. So sine cosine minus cosine of the first, sine of the second. And now we just start filling in values. The sine of 5 pi over 6 is a half. Remember, cosine's negative at, in the second quadrant where 3 pi over 4 is. Cosine of 5 pi over 6. So now we're in the second quadrant. Cosines are negative. Sines are positive. So I get a negative square root of 2 over 4. Minus minus makes a plus. Square root of 6 over 4. All right. So here's a little trick. I, obviously, I'm recording a video, so I could have just erased my mistake and re recorded this, and you would have never noticed it. But I, I think this is actually kind of an important thing to notice. When I got to the end, I looked and I said square root of 6 minus square root of 2 all over 4 is a positive number, right? The square root of 6 is bigger than the square root of 2. But at the beginning of the problem, I said my answer is going to be in quadrant 4, where the sine value is negative. So something went wrong here. What went wrong here? Well, there's one of two things. Either I have the wrong formula or I put the wrong values in for sine and cosine. And I'm pretty sure I put the right values in for sine and cosine. So if I go back and I look at that sine formula, it turns out I put a minus where I should have put a plus, right? Over here where I put a minus, if you were yelling at the video, you're right, that minus should be a plus. So that minus should be a plus. So instead of a plus over here, that thing's actually a minus. So I get negative square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4. And that's the correct answer. It's negative now. So I left this in here just to show that, you know, sometimes you're, you're working through these and you get the formula wrong. And when you get to the end, check your work to see if at least your sign is correct. And I knew that my sign, my S-I-G-N sign, in that fourth quadrant was supposed to be negative. But the answer I got was positive. So then you go back and you sort of work your way backwards to try to figure out where the mistake happened. Either it was a mistake in my evaluations or a mistake in my formula, and I put the formula in wrong, right? When it's cosine, that's when the sign in between changes. When it's sine, the sign in between doesn't change. If it's a sine of A plus B, it's sine cosine plus cosine sine. So I left that in there just to show that, you know, first of all, people do, I do make mistakes. But then the second part is, how do you check those mistakes and make sure that when you box the answer, the correct answer is in there. All right, a couple more of these, and then we'll draw some pictures, and then we'll do at least a second video for the tangents. So it says find an exact value for the following. Look, this is in the form of cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So it must be the cosine of something. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine means what's in the middle is a minus. So it's got to be the cosine of 80 minus 20. Cosine of 60 degrees, what's the cosine of 60 degrees? A half. What does this formula match up with? Sine, cosine, cosine, sine is got to be the sine of A plus B, right? For the sine, that's the one where the plus remains a plus, as we just found out. So 24 plus 21, sine of 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2. Down the bottom here, you notice it's the same thing, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, except I've got things in radian measure. And so this becomes the sine of pi over 24 plus 7 pi over 24, which is the sine of 8 pi over 24, which is the sine 
of pi over 3. And then I just look at my unit circle. What's the sine of pi over 3? Square root of 3 over 2. All right, this is learning a little bit long, but let's get all the concepts in this one at once. This says that the cosine of a is negative 12 over 13 in quadrant 2, and the sine is negative 7 over 25 in quadrant 3. Find the sine of a plus b. Find the cosine of a plus b. Hmm, okay. First of all, we could use ourselves a picture. So the cosine is in quadrant 2. So here we are in quadrant 2. That's angle A. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. If you recognize this as a 5, 12, 13 triangle, that should fill in the blanks very quick. All right, the sine of B is negative 7 over 25 in quadrant 3. So here I am in quadrant 3. B. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So there's my opposite. There's my hypotenuse. Again, Pythagorean theorem fills in that as 24, but 24 going to the left. And so some people like to line up everything they need, right? So if you want the sine of A plus B, you're going to need the sine of A, the sine of B, cosine A, cosine B. So if the cosine of A is negative 12 over 13, that means that the sine of A is 5 over 13. And if the sine of B is negative 7 over 25, Go down to the triangle I just drew on the bottom right. That means the cosine of B is negative 24 over 25. So how does the formula work for the sine of A plus B? Sine of A plus B, sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. And now it's a matter of filling in the blanks. You get 5 over 13 times negative 24 over 25 plus negative 12 over 13 times negative 7 over 25. So negative 24 times 5 is negative 120 over 13 times 25. I'm going to grab a calculator for that one. 325. And then negative 12 times negative 7 is positive 84. Again, over 325, and then 84 minus 120, negative 36. All right. Is there anything I can do to simplify that? I don't know. 36 has a lot of factors, but 325 has 5s and 25s, so the, the top one doesn't. So I think I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, cosine of A minus B. How do we do the cosine of A minus B? That's the one that goes cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So we'll do cosine, cosine plus sine, sine. All right, back to my numbers up at the top. The cosine of A is negative 12 over 13. The cosine of B is negative 24 over 25. Sine of A is 5 over 13. Sine of B is negative 7 over 25. All right, so 24 times 12 is 288. So I get 288 over 325 minus 35 over 325, which gives me 253 over 325. And I'm going with that's probably as simple as it gets. All right, hang in there. I got one more. It says draw a triangle and find exact values. 
so we've got a sine of a and a cosine of b. So let's do like the last one and draw ourselves a couple of pictures. So the sine is in quadrant four. All right, so I'm going to call that angle a. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite over hypotenuse. Pythagorean triple will fill this in as 24. So if the sine of a is negative 7 over 25, the cosine of a is going to be 24 over 25. All right, cosine of b is 4 over 5 in quadrant 1. So there's quadrant 1 adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, Pythagorean triple, there's your 3. So that must mean the sine of angle B opposite over hypotenuse. So how does the formula work for the sine of A minus B? Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So sine A, cosine B minus cosine A, sine B. Right, so the sine of A, negative 7 over 25. Cosine of B is going to be given to us as 4 fifths minus cosine A, which was 24 over 25, times the sine of B, which is 3 fifths. All right, I'm going to carry it out this way. It gives me negative 28 over 125 minus 72 over 125. And that's just a nice number. It gives me negative 100 over 125 which simplifies to be negative four-fifths. All right, what's the cosine of A minus B? Well, let's find our formula. For cosine, we do cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So cosine, cosine, change the sine in the middle to a plus, sine, sine. And now we just fill in the blanks, right? The cosine of A, is 24 over 25. Cosine of B was given as 4 over, 20, uh, 4 over 5. Plus, the sine of A was given as negative 7 over 25. Sine B, 3 over 5. So this gives me 96 over 125 minus 21 over 125, nice numbers. 75 over 125, 3 fifths. Now, the third thing says find the tangent of A minus B. Well, we don't have a formula yet for the tangent of A minus B, but if I have the sine and the cosine of A minus B, I can take sine and divide it by cosine. So I can take negative 4 fifths and divide it by 3 fifths. So take the negative 4 fifths, change division to multiplication, multiply by the reciprocal, and I end up with negative 4 thirds. So what this leads me to believe is that there should be somewhere then a formula that would help me to find the tangent of A minus B if I didn't already have the sine and cosine, because here I've got the sine and cosine. What if I wanted to find the tangent of something and all I had was information about the tangents, but not about the sines and the cosines. Well, good news, bad news, I guess, since there's more formulas. But the good news is there's a formula coming for the tan of A minus B. The other good news is not in this video because it's almost a half hour long. So we'll pick up with the sum and difference formula for tangents after this.